Hey guys, Alton here. First off, I want to say thanks for checking out my YouTube channel. And for today's video, we're going to go ahead and we're going to take a look at one of my selected lectures from my best selling 10 and a half hour introduction to information security management course. So let's go ahead and let's get into it. In this video, I want to spend some time talking about the many different areas of information security and information security management. And I want to make sure we talk about this now before we get into the course and start talking about all the different areas within information security, because there are some misconceptions as to what information security, or in other words, IT security, or cybersecurity, or network security, in regards to what it is, a lot of people go into it and they think about specific areas such as being an ethical hacker or working in network security or IT security operations. But in all reality, those are just a very small portions of the overarching area and domain of information security and information security management. So what we're going to do in this lecture is we're going to spend some time talking about the different areas. And don't worry if you can't really read this diagram because on the next couple of slides, I've broken them into two diagrams so we can read them a bit better. And then what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at the NIST special publication 800 dash 100 overview to give you an idea of what goes into an information security program and the specific elements that people put into them. So let's go ahead and let's get started and we'll jump to the next slide. So there are five different areas on here that I want to talk about and we'll start at the top. So we'll start at application security. So application security, this deals with everything in regards to developing applications, making sure that we are utilizing a secure development lifecycle methodology, making sure that information security and secure coding practices aren't an afterthought, that while we're developing the application, we think about that stuff. And then it also deals with testing as well as accreditation and certification as well. The second one in here is access control, and this can be physical or logical access control. And we're going to spend a little bit of time talking about both of those in this course. And in terms of people that deal with access control, well, it could be the physical access control personnel, the people for an organization. And then for logical access control, that would be our system administrators, our network administrators, lots of different people play a role in access control. The third one that I want to talk about is business continuity and disaster recovery. And we have a whole section on this. So in terms of when disasters occur, we have to have a business continuity plan and a disaster recovery plan. And there are people that focus on putting those teams together, developing those plans, testing them and maintaining them. And they play a huge role in what we do. The next one is governance and risk management, and this is where I spend a lot of my time at work. Governance deals with all the policies and procedures and dealing with the C-level executives and what they look at in terms of wanting to mold the information security program plan from a strategic perspective, from a legal and compliance perspective, and also putting together different steering committees and governance boards and so forth. For risk management, that's all about looking at risk from either a quantitative or a qualitative or a mixture of both of those to determine what our risks are, how severe they are, and how we should put control measures into place in regards to our risks that we identify. The next one and the last one on the slide is legal regulatory compliance and investigations. So whatever we do in information security, we need to make sure that we are in compliance with laws and regulations and standards and different types of investigations, whether they're internal investigations or they're external with law enforcement. And we're going to talk a little bit about this as well. So those are the first five. Let's go ahead and let's jump to the next slide and let's talk about five of the ones that I put into here. So we already talked about application security, security architecture and design. There's a little bit of overlap there, but this is more of a broader sense. So this is the entire architecture and design 
of our IT infrastructure. So we're thinking about our applications, we're thinking about our systems, we're thinking about our network, we're thinking about all the software that is on our network and our systems. With all of that from an enterprise architecture perspective, we need to make sure that security again is baked into it and built into it and not an afterthought. Then segueing to network security, which really is a subset of this, but it also is a part of, net, of network operations and IT security operations where we are monitoring what's going on with all of this. And you'll notice that I do have security operations down here. So network operations and security operations kind of go hand in hand. So when we talk about things such as our firewalls, our IDSs, our IPSs, honeypots and honey nets, and our computer incident response team. So network security and security operations both play a role in that. In regards to network security, it also plays a role in the architectural design to make sure that we design it in a secure fashion. And then we have physical security. So we already talked about access control, but physical security is all about, well, like its name implies, physically securing our physical infrastructure. So our buildings, the perimeter of our building, uh, access into and out of our physical locations and access to various areas within as well, and also putting all sorts of different security control measures in place. And then lastly, cryptography, or in other words, a very simple way of talking about this would just simply say encryption. So dealing with cryptology and encryption and hashing and making sure that we're using those technologies in an effective way and also people developing those and actually writing those algorithms and testing them as well. That's a huge part of information security. So as you can see, there's a lot of different aspects or elements of information security. And if I just go back to that first slide where we have all these listed here, these are a lot of different elements. And we're actually going to take a look at the NIST special publication next. And they've broken that up into more elements than what we see here. But from just a very broad, high level of perspective, this gives you a good overview of the different areas within information security. So if you're new to the field and you're considering going into information security, you can think about all these different areas. So with that said, let's take a look at the NIST special publication 800-100. So there's a lot of information on this slide and I wanted to make sure that I included as much information as possible because this is an information security management course. Some of you may be managers where you're looking to develop out a more robust information security management program. A documentation like this is going to be invaluable for you. So what is this? What is NIST? Well, let me get my highlighter. So NIST stands for the National Institute of Standards and Technology. And what they do is they provide the best practices and white papers that the federal government follows. And a lot of them we have to follow as part of our FISMA requirements. And we'll talk about FISMA in this course as well. And what NIST has done is they've put together what they call our special publications or just simply SP. And they are the 800 series. And this one is 800-100. So they have multiple different documents and it's gonna be 800-something. The 800-100 document, and I'll actually I'll put a link as a resource for this lecture so you can download the PDF and read it. What this is, is for information security, it's a guide for information security managers. So we're gonna take a look at the overview of it, the purpose and the audience, and I just pulled these directly from the document to give you high level perspective. And then on the next slide, we'll take a look at what they list as elements that should be within an information security program plan. So an overview of this document, the purpose of it is to provide a broad overview of information security program elements to assist managers in understanding how to establish and implement an information security program. So like I said, for those of you that are in this course that are looking to establish, implement, or make your current information security program more robust, I think this is gonna be a good document for you. So the purpose of it is to inform members 
of information security management. And let me highlight this because this is important. So the purpose of this document is to inform the members of the information security program management team about the various aspects of information security that they will be expected to implement and oversee in the respective organizations. Now you'll notice here that it says will be expected. Well, this was designed for the United States federal government. And so what this is, this is considered a handbook and it provides guidance for facilitating a more consistent approach to information security programs across the federal government. And even though this is terminology that relates to the federal government and the federal sector, this handbook can also be used to provide guidance on a variety of other governmental organization or institutional security requirements. So in other words, what they're saying here in this last sentence is that, look, even though we wrote this for the United States federal government, if you are a state governmental agency or if you're a city governmental agency, if you're a governmental agency in the UK or Australia or Canada, or if you're just a business, whether you are a for-profit or non-profit, if, if you're a non-governmental agency, then feel free to use this because this is going to apply to you. Because when it comes to the basics of information security, they really are the same everywhere. And so the audience for this is going to include agency heads, CIOs, CISOs. So this is gonna be the head honcho person that is running the information security program and security managers. And security managers can really be any sort of a manager that works in cybersecurity and IT security. and and this handbook provides information to the audience that can be used in building their information security program strategy. The handbook is useful to any manager who requires a broad overview of information security practices. So that was a lot of information. So let's go ahead and let's jump to the next slide and let's look at the different program elements. And this is what they recommend are the high level program elements for an information security management program. So there's information security governance, something we already talked about. The system development lifecycle, this is all about application security, making sure that we develop our systems and our applications in a secure manner. Awareness and training, ensuring that we teach and we make everybody within our organization aware of IT security best practices and our different subject matter experts that we train them with the specific training that they need as well. Something that we haven't seen yet is capital planning and investment control. And what you'll find as we go through this course is that when we talk about information security, there is a cost trade-off. So there's a cost associated with it. There's a monetary cost. And so we need to think about it from an investment perspective and an ROI perspective, a return on our investment. And so that's what capital planning and investment control deals with. Interconnecting systems, well, that deals with our network. So that's going to be network security. Performance measures, something that we haven't talked about yet. This deals with our key performance indicators and our key risk indicators. So having those performance measures in place so we can monitor the success of our information security program over time. Security planning, just a very broad overview, making sure that we are planning our security program in an effective manner. IT contingency planning, well, you know what, contingency management plays a big role in risk management whenever we have incidents and we have disasters. So definitely this is a big role in information security. Risk management, something we already talked about. Certification, accreditation, and security assessments. So certification accreditation is a process of certifying and accrediting like its name applies a system or an application before it goes into the production environment. It's actually reviewed and signed off on. We don't really talk about the CNA process in this course, but it does play a big role in information security. And then security assessments such as penetration testing, vulnerability assessments, security assessments, auditing. We talk about security assessments in this course in great depth. And then there are security services and products acquisition. This actually goes hand in hand with capital planning and investment control. And this really deals with contract management and so forth as well. But these two go hand in hand. And then incident response, we talk about this in this course. So whenever there's any sort of a cybersecurity incident, whether it's small or it's big, we deal with 
how we deal with that. And then lastly, configuration management. Well, that's how we set up our security configuration baselines for our servers, our systems, our routers, pretty much anything we have those in place. We need to make sure that we have configuration management and change management. So those are the different program elements of the NIST Special Publication 800-100 program elements. And I wanted to make sure that I put that in this lecture for those of you that are interested in reading it. So there is a link down below in this lecture, well actually probably on the side, it really depends on where you're viewing this, whether it's on the smartphone app or on their website. There is a link to get to the NIST Special Publication 800-100 PDF file. So it'll take you to the website. You can click on the link to download it and read it from there. So I know this was a lengthy lecture. If you have any questions about everything we covered in here, please let me know. Some of this might be a bit confusing to you in regards to the different things I talked about, but we're going to spend a lot of time in this course talking about a lot of the stuff that we did cover in this lecture. So if it was a bit confusing now, hopefully by the time you're finished with the course, you'll have a much better idea of all these different things. So thanks for watching. If you have any questions, please let me know. If not, I'll see you at the next video. Take care. Well, I hope that you enjoyed today's video and you learned a lot from it. If you did, please give this video a thumbs up and also consider subscribing to my YouTube channel. Now, if you're interested in taking this full course or just learning more about it, check out the video description down below because I've included a link where you can learn more about the course and enroll into it if you'd like. So again, thanks for watching my video. I appreciate it and I look forward to seeing you guys at the next video. Take care.